Atom Smasher turned out to be a pretty weak villain in the game. But there is one really interesting interaction early on in the story that a lot of players may have missed on their first playthrough. When you're at Compeki Plaza with Jackie stealing the data shard, at one point you're almost caught red-handed and have to hide inside Yorinobu's room while Saburo Arasaka and Adam Smasher themselves enter the room as well. On first glance, it seems like you narrowly avoided being detected, but upon further inspection, that may not be the case. You see, there's an iCyberware mod called a Threat Detector that when equipped shows any enemies in the area that are aware of your presence and outlines them in red. And lo and behold, if you have this equipped during the cutscene, you can see Adam Smasher clearly outlined in red, staring right at you and Jackie. Could this mean Adam Smasher knew the whole time? Were you set up from the beginning? Did Adam know Saburo was about to be killed? This would have major ramifications on the story of the game. Or it could just be that all the bosses in the game have a script that allows them to see you at all times for gameplay purposes. But let's ignore that, because that's not fun. One of the lesser known series of missions in Cyberpunk is the Imagine Gigs with a Buddhist Zen master. You originally stumble upon this quest line if you were walking through the downtown Corpo Plaza area, and more specifically in the gardens. Here you will find a Zen master who asks you for some money to take you on a spiritual journey, as he has seen something in you. If you accept, you are transported into a foreign jungle, the likes of which you see nowhere else in the game for the most part, and this series continues with you meeting this mysterious monk in many locations across the world, hearing his words of wisdom, and having your mind be transported to unknown locations in nature each time with the monk disappearing when you come back to your senses. It's a nice change of pace from the chaos of the rest of the game, but it's also harboring some very significant ramifications. A big part of the cyberpunk main story is about the idea of human souls and what it means to be human, about whether copying ourselves into new bodies is really us or some new sort of monstrosity. And the ending of this questline specifically has some big answers for us. You see, upon completing the last meetup with this monk, he once again disappears into oblivion. But this time, Johnny is now next to us, sitting and looking into the distance. When confronted about his thoughts on the monk and his visions, Johnny questions what you are even talking about. And it quickly becomes clear that he has not been seeing what you have. The reason this is so significant is this is the only time in the entire game where you and Johnny had this sort of cognitive dissonance. Through every fight and every cutscene, Johnny is with you along the way, and it is only on the journeys with this monk that he seems to remember nothing. These journeys through your soul. Sitting next to Johnny after the monk disappears are two objects, a Buddhist altar trinket and a small shard. The shard tells the story of a man telling his grandson the story of the Tower of Babel, which for those of you who don't know, is a story of humankind building a tower to try and reach heaven to avoid persecution, which resulted in God creating multiple languages to spite them. And in this shard, the man tells his grandson about the different religions and atheism, and how they all wanted to answer one burning question. Do we have a soul or not? It is strongly implied through this entire quest that at least in cyberpunk, we do have a soul, and that even a crazy terrorist man stuck in your head cannot take that away from you, and that maybe what these monks across the game world are studying is how to tap into our souls in a world that has become so soulless. This also would have implications for the ending and story beats of cyberpunk, as it would confirm that those transferring their mind and body to new hosts and living on will still have lost what made them human, the soul. In fact, in one of Maximum Mike's radio discussions, he mentions that this monk master may just be Bart Moss wandering around in a new body, helping to offer guidance to lost souls as we know others like Missy have seen this man from logs on her computer as well. A lot of people have probably gone through Pan Am's quest for reasons. 
And one part of the quest line actually takes you through a small underground cave in the Badlands. And it's a pretty cool section, especially because it's the only time in the game we really get to go in underground caves like this, barring the Pan Am ending as well. What a lot of people don't know, though, is that in the game's files and with modding and console commands, it's actually possible to find a pretty extensive network of unfinished and unpolished underground sections right beneath Night City. These sections are dark, damp, and devoid of any content, but they are there and they certainly seem like they were intended for something at some point. In fact, during some of the radio station's commentaries throughout the game, there is one moment where we hear rumors of corrupted corpo vampires living underground in extensive cave systems throughout Night City. This sounds absolutely absurd at first glance, but it gets extremely interesting when we look back to one of the earliest leaks of Cyberpunk 2077 by a previously disgruntled employee. The developer noted a lot of things about the game and its progress that at the time were hated in the community, but turned out to be true upon release. And most interestingly, he noted one big piece of cut content the game was originally intended to have was an underground network of sewers and caves that was home to an army of vampire-like creatures similar to the vampires in the Masquerade Bloodline series. When we put all this evidence together, it starts to become very clear that this network of unused tunnels for sure was originally intended to house something. And that something is most likely an army of corpo vampires that kidnap and kill people to harness their strength. It's a pretty out there theory, but based on what we know about cyberpunk and weird theories, it would fit right in. Maxima Mike and Gary the Prophet are the two most prolific conspiracy theorists in the game, and naturally, because of this, they have to make it onto my list. Mike is a man you always hear on the radio talking about crazy conspiracies and corpo wrongdoings, and Gary is the co-carnage lookalike right outside Victor and Misty's clinics shouting about aliens nonstop. But the crazy thing is, what if they weren't so crazy after all? Throughout his quest, Gary screams to the public, letting them know that giant humanoid lizard alien monster men are taking over the net and coming into our world to take control of everything. You see, although Gary's quest line can end in multiple ways, the most interesting for sure is the final one where he is kidnapped and his disciple takes his place. When questioned, the disciple notes that Gary was kidnapped by men in suits with blue eyes and taken to the mothership. This gets even more weird as we can actually see men like this throughout the game, even donning a specific ring on their finger that seems to denote that they are part of some shadow organization. Maxima Mike also alludes to this on some of his radio chatter about interdimensional beings that have taken over the net and are hell bent on controlling the world. So what originally sounds like crazy nonsense from a detained man on the streets and on the radio slowly unfolds into something much deeper. We know from some shards in the game that there has been probes sent into space with the explicit intention of having aliens connect to our net in the cyberpunk universe. And even some speculation in these data banks that aliens may have already found us. Even more convincing, Bart Moss, who we talked about before, had a book that he made about himself. And in that book, he talked about how aliens were likely already a part of the net. And as one of the most genius hackers of all time, if you had to take someone's word for it, it would be his. But if Mike and Gary's sermons are actually true, this would mean that interdimensional lizard aliens are more than just funny Alex Jones-like theories, and actually a part of by far the biggest conspiracy in Cyberpunk 2077. One that will likely play out in future DLC and hopefully lends credence to the idea that there are things much scarier than corporations in cyberspace. <laughs> 